been praying for 200 and uh, got pretty close. I believe, I believe Jamie missed eight. Hey, what a blessing. Amen. You say preacher is not about numbers. I realize that. But the more you have here, the better opportunity you have winning somebody to Christ. Amen. That's a blessing. So I just thank the Lord for it. I guess uh, on Sunday mornings, especially for those of you that would, uh, we probably need to start parking up on the grass again. That's a good thing. Amen and uh, make room for our visitors if they come in. A lot of folks drive through the parking lot. They know a parking spot. They'll just keep on and going. So um, those that would and those that can are capable. I know have, I know we have some folks that uh, can't walk that distance, and I understand that, but those of you that are able to do so, uh, you just follow suit. I'll be parked up there Sunday morning. I normally park in the back where I don't take up a spot anyway, but uh, I'll park up there, and you can see how we can park. Just make a few extra spots. Uh, for our visitors, and that would be a real blessing. Amen. Well, let's pray for those in need of our prayers tonight. And, of course, there's many that do. Uh, can you pray for Brother Mark's family and his brother? Pray that the Lord just bless him. His dad's service, funeral service tomorrow will be graveside, and it will be at uh, 3 o'clock. Is that called Westview Cemetery? Westview Cemetery. That's on Reval Road there right across Highway 290 on the left going out. Is it Westwood? This floor is out there. If you go out Regal Road, go straight across 290. It's down on the left. You, Westwood, can't miss it. So um, just, if you can't attend the service, just pray for Brother Mark and him. The Lord give him the grace and the strength, amen, during this time. And then, of course, keep uh, Sister Becky and Sister Carolyn in your prayers also. And then, of course, our sick folk, Brother Roy said, Patty's been sick uh, for a couple of days now, so let's pray and keep her in our prayers. And Brother Mickey, he's been able to be with us both services today, and that's a blessing. So uh, it's good to see Miss uh, Woodbury and Billy here this morning. That was a blessing also. So many people need our prayer. Of course, Denise is still in the hospital. Rick Rack's still in the hospital. And Kit's daddy's still in the hospital. He'll be having surgery on Tuesday. So pray for him. Let's stand if you would, and we'll go to the Lord in word of prayer. We'll ask the Lord's blessings to be upon these requests and upon the service, upon the song service. Just pray the Lord just bless us real good, and, and we'll have a good time tonight in the Lord's house. Brother Jack, would you pray for us, please? Yes, I do. 
Amen. Remain standing, take a hymn book, turn to page 135. We'll sing the first and last stanza coming down. Amen. We have two young ladies that are going to come and play their clarinets. You pray for them as they play with Linda. Thank the Lord for these young people. Amen. Let's all give them a hand one more time, will you? God bless you. Amen. God bless you, ladies. Brother David is going to sing for us. You pray for him as he sings. I first was going to sing over there, but then I got to thinking I need to be able to see the words because I haven't done this song that many times and haven't learned it. But I just want to thank the Lord tonight for what He's done in my life. And one of these days, 
Y'all can look for me at Jesus' feet. If I leave this world of sorrow Sometime before you do Just look for me in heaven and we'll talk the ages through. But if at first you fail to see me, let me tell you where I'll be. I'll be thanking Christ, my Savior, for saving a wretch like me. But if you should reach that city, before my time has come, perhaps you'd like to greet me when my race down here is run. Just wait for I'll soon be coming across life's ebbing sea, and I'll tell you now, dear loved one. Where to wait for me? Don't look at the gates of birth. Don't look on the streets of gold. Don't look by the walls of Jasper, nor among the many sights untold. For I've been longing and I've been waiting. For the precious Holy One to see To the countless ages Look for me at Jesus' I'll be through the countless ages. Look for me at Jesus' Amen. Take a hymn book, turn to page 32. We're going to sing the first and last stanza when the roll is called up yonder. Please stand.
before we start playing. I I enjoyed that. I appreciate that. I appreciate those young ladies. I appreciate Brother David singing for us. And just in a little bit, Bob and Topanga are going to sing for us. And uh, thank God for the good choir practice. And uh, they did a wonderful job. Let's sing this like we believe it. I know Amen. it's an old song, but yeah. I don't believe you can get any older than God. He always been and he always has been. And he always will be. Amen. Let's sing it. Sing it out, church. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be over, then the morning brings the earth right and black. When the same of earth shall gather over on the earth, then the rumble is gone to thunder of his land. Me up when 
no one is around. Deep inside this armor, all you're is a child. And all and I go running home and I fall down. And all who picks me up when no one is around. Deep inside this armor, all you're is a child. All you're is a Amen, folks. We we'll get our armor on. We're in a fight. We're in a battle. Amen. And the Bible tells us how do we equip ourselves in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And I'll tell you right now, you better not leave off one piece of armor if you're going to fight the good fight of faith. Because the devil's going to hit you in your weakest point. And most people turn and run and we don't have any protection for the back. It's all for the front. So that means we need to go forward. For the Lord Jesus Christ and serve him. What a blessing that is. Well, it's good to have you tonight. Good to have our visitors with us. I don't think we have any first time visitors. But if we do, thank you for coming. Appreciate those that have visited before. And you came back again. So thank you so much for doing that. Let's receive our offering tonight. Let's have the ushers to come forward. And we receive our offering. And um, Brother Steve has somebody that works with him. His wife passed away. Did you say it was a Lawson? What's the name, their last name? Wilson. Okay, so pray for that family. Brother Stephen will be leaving in a few minutes. They're going to receiving the friends tonight. So you pray for that family. The Lord will sustain them and help them and during this um, during this time of bereavement. Well, a lot of folk we need to. It's going through a lot of things right now, so we need to lift them up and pray for them. You give tonight, give it unto the Lord, and I'm sure the Lord will bless you. Thank you already for how faithful you give today. You know, you'll never be able to give more than you give back to you. So just trust the Lord. Do what's pleasing and honorable unto him. Let's ask the Lord's blessing. Brother Donnie, if you would please, you pray for us and ask the Lord's blessing on the altar. Yes, we do, Father. Yes, thank you, Father. Help us, Lord, yes. Yes. Yes, thank you, Lord. Hey, man. <laughs> Thank you. 
Keep on the firing line. Load your gun. Have the ammunition ready. Don't run out of ammo. Amen. Uh, ladies meeting uh, Thursday night here at the church at seven at six o'clock on November the seventh. And all the ladies that are interested in helping with a meal for the ladies' meeting, meet down at the front of the church after the service. All ladies interested in eating a meal. No. You'd have a crowd down here if we done that. But <laughs> if you're interested in helping with a meal for Thursday night, come down to the front and have a little brief meeting. And don't forget the meeting. All ladies are invited. And uh, let me encourage you to come if you can. We'll be out of town that day. We'll be preaching down at Brother Chris Grinstead's church. It's his 10th anniversary. And uh, they're celebrating that uh, anniversary this week. Well, this will begin tomorrow night uh, with some different preachers each night. We'll be preaching on Thursday night. You pray for us. I appreciate if you would do that. And uh, pray for the meeting all week. The Lord bless you. Brother Andrew Kerrigan is in missions conference this week. Pray for him and his church. And there's some other revivals that are coming up. Brother Walford over at uh, Calvary Hill Baptist Church in Lyman has a revival coming up, I think, week after next. So uh, pray for these meetings and pray the Lord to just bless each one of them, give them souls for their labor. Uh, ask Brother Rick to ask Tony if he had that song with him tonight about uh, There is a Cross. I think it's the name of it. You have, to, you have it, Brother Tony? Brother Tony's going to come and sing that for us. I appreciate Brother Tony. I enjoyed that song this morning, didn't you? Yeah. Sinner Saved by Grace. Enjoyed the one that Jessica sang for us. Enjoyed the one that Sister Michelle sang for us. Just real good. I just thoroughly enjoyed it so much. And what a blessed boy. I enjoy hearing our people sing. And, uh, I enjoy the good spirit that they have and uh, the good worship attitude they have when they're singing. So you pray for Brother Tony as he sings this song for us. saw his wife sin in the garden in the distance God saw a cross when Cain killed his brother God was watching Egyptian man in anger. God saw a cross, and when David chose Bathsheba over honor, God knew there had to be a cross. God saw a cross being raised on the horizon. God saw his son being slain for one and all. God saw his blood being shed for our redemption for every fall. God saw a cross. When I was born, the world just saw a sinner. Oh, but thanks to Jesus, God saw a cross. And when I first rejected His great offer, I'm so thankful God still saw the cross. And with each wicked choice, I walked in darkness. My God saw a cross. So blinded by my sin. My soul was helpless, 
with eyes of mercy, God still saw a cross. God saw a cross being raised on the horizon. God saw His Son being slain for one and all. God saw His blood being shed for our redemption for every fall. God saw a cross. Hey, when I finally gave my heart to Jesus, from that moment of time until forever, when God sees me, He only sees a cross. Oh, God sees a cross He prays on the horizon God sees His Son Being slain for one and all God sees His blood Being shed for my redemption For every God sees a cross. God sees a cross. Hey. Boy, isn't that a blessing? Whew, man, I enjoy that. I could listen, I could listen to that again. Amen. Well, I tell you, Lord blessed us, I'm telling you. I just I just stand amazed. I've told you this story before. Well, it's not a story, it's a, actually happening. But I've said this before. That when the Lord laid upon our heart to start a church, when you start with nothing, you say, well, now wait, wait a minute, preacher, I was here when you started. <laughs> you know what I mean. We didn't have a piano player. Didn't, well, we not done no good because we didn't have no piano either. We had one that, where did we get that first piano? But anyway, that thing, we had a big old upright piano. I know we had one with Gene Pryor, but we had one before that. It's a big old upright piano. I don't remember where we got it. That's one of them old big old highback things. That thing weighed nine tons. And uh, come find out, it had a broke soundboard in it. Well, whatever the piano's got in it on the back. It was broke, busted. No wonder it didn't sound good. And then we finally got a little old console model piano that Miss Jean Fryer let us use, and then we had a little old keyboard that they gave us, Deborah gave us, and I think Deborah Davis gave us, and they'll, I think she's coming in this weekend, so she'll probably be here Sunday. And um, we had that, and we had, uh, Taylor was taking piano lessons, and we had Edward that was playing, and they weren't able to be there all the time. So a lot of times we were singing without music. And... Um, and I remember relating, relating it to this. The King James 1611 boys all go to Mountain View Baptist Church, which certainly is a larger church than we are. And we just started. But I said, boy, I wish the Lord would send us some good musicians. Somebody could play the guitars and we'd have some good instrument players and good piano players. You know, the Lord just gave us that. He sent it to us. We asked for it and he gave it to us. My, 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 we just, we, we, we just, we're blessed beyond measure with, with, with people in our church that can sing. Man, I'm telling you, it's just amazing. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about any ordinary singing. I'm talking about some good singing, amen. Praise the Lord. It blesses my heart. It blesses my soul. 
and um, just encourages me so much when I see what the Lord does and what he does through the work here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Every time I come, I get something, folks. I get some help. I get some strength. I enjoy it. I get some happiness. I ain't going to sit on the pew and be miserable. I ask they can do it. And then people come to church and sit that way sometimes because of things they have in their heart. Things that's not pleasing unto the Lord. Things that the devil's fighting them and battling them with. Bitterness and envy and strife. Hard feelings. Chips on shoulders. They ain't going to do it. And we ain't praying. You can look up here. The folk I'm telling you, you ought to come to church. We ought to enjoy it. Enjoy it to the fullest. Life is too short. Life is too short to let the devil rob you of a time in the Lord's house. I try to encourage you to rejoice. I try to encourage you to add. I try to encourage you to say amen. Shout. Praise the Lord. Raise your hand. I try to encourage you to do that. If you do that, I know you're awake most of the time. Amen. But anyway, we talked this morning concerning the foundation of God that stands assured. We mentioned this morning on, on that foundation, and we talked about that foundation. But what is the reason and why is this foundation that stands assured? How can it do that? Turn your Bibles, if you would, please. And let's just read that verse that I read to you this morning in 2 Timothy. And then we're going to be going to the book of Hebrews. And pray that the Lord will just speak to our hearts tonight. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 19, the verse that we read this morning, what a blessing it is. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. I believe tonight that the foundation that we're built upon and the foundation of God that stands assured has a lot to do with our attitude and what we're really leaning and trusting in. We talked about a lot of things this morning that certainly will not help you as far as salvation is concerned. But let me just say also that the foundation that has been established and the foundation that has been made strong in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, sometimes our attitude is reflected in how we conduct ourselves, on how we're really trusting and leaning in that, in that firm foundation. We see that everything, I mentioned this this morning, that everything is laid upon the sure foundation in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to notice that the foundation of God stands assured because of the finished work of the Savior. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that in Him all the fullness of God dwells. He was made lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Thank God there was a cross. Thank God there still is a cross. It's a cross, there was a cross that was used as a way of providing Redemption through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there still is a cross that we look to where he died upon that we can obtain eternal redemption in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. I like songs about the cross. I like the old rugged cross. I like that there's a fountain filled with blood and talks about the cross of Christ. I like that song at Calvary. Years I spent it in vanity and pride. Thank God for the cross and thank God for Calvary. Thank God for the hill called Golgotha. Oh, what a blessing that is. But you see, our foundation was established ever before that happened. The foundation was established in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ in the mind of, in the mind of God before the foundations of the world. This was not something, as I said this morning, that was thought up after everything else was done. He saw, as that song that Brother Tony sang, he saw what Eve would do. He saw what Moses would do. He saw what you and I would do. That, was, that is what you call the sovereignty of God. 
The sovereignty of God is nothing more than the supreme power that God has. And God has the ability to see the ending even before the beginning. And thank God for that. He saw a need that that we would have, that we would need a, a foundation, something that we could be built upon, something that we could stand on, something that would stand the test of time, and something that would always be there when we needed it. And we see that in the finished work of our Savior. In the book of Hebrews, chapter number 1, I want to read verses 1 down through verse number 4 for you in that particular verse of Scripture concerning uh, the finished work of the Savior. Hebrews chapter four, chapter 1, verse number 1, reading down through verse number 4, the Bible says, God, who in sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had laid by himself, purged our sins, sat down on the on the right of the majesty, on set on the right hand of the majesty on high being made much better than the angels, and hath hath by an inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Oh, hey, what a name, the name of Jesus. When you begin to think, Brother Edward sings that song for us sometimes, uh, there's something about that name. When you begin to think about the finished work of our Savior on the cross of Calvary, the Bible says in the latter part of verse number 3, it says, when he by himself purged our sins, Thank God he purged our sins. The word purge just simply means that we have been cleansed, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God and thank the great God of heaven for what he hath done for us. Knowing that he hath purged our sins and the reason tonight that we have a foundation that we can build on, a foundation that we can trust in, a foundation that we can rely upon is because of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, that took place on the cross of Calvary. We see that the finished work of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, it stands on the sinless sacrifice of Christ. He had not committed one sin. He never even thought about committing the sin. But the Bible says, yet was tempted in all areas that we, as we were, yet he was without sin. You know, thank God. If he had committed one sin, then he would have not been able to have been the sacrifice and be the finished work for the foundation that we're built upon had he committed one sin. Had he even thought one sin, he would have not been able to die for you and me. He would have not been able to have purged our sins. But thank God for that. Oh, what a blessing that is to know that he is a sinless sacrifice. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 21, the Bible says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Thank God for that. The Bible said he knew no sin. And what a blessing tonight to know that he was a sinless sacrifice. Look, if you would, please, to the book of 1 Peter chapter number 3. And verse number 8, and notice what it says. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 18, I'm sorry, not 8, verse number 18. The Bible tells us in verse number 18, it says, For Christ also hath what suffered for us, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Thank God for the fact. The Bible says the just for the unjust. Now, the word just there in that verse means this. It means to be innocent, to be holy, and to be righteous. That is the sacri- That is the, the work of the sinless Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He was no doubt innocent. He was not guilty of any charges. We see the Bible tells us that he was holy. Oh, yes, he's holy, holy, holy. And boy, hey, glory to God, he is holy, he is righteous. And then we see on the other hand, we see the word just, then we see the word unjust. The word unjust means to be wicked. That's you and me. Wicked. Treacherous. 
heathens and unrighteous. That's what we are. That's what we were until he imputed his righteousness upon us by justifying us the day that we trusted and accepted him as the sinless sacrifice, as the sinless Savior in order that our foundation could be established upon the finished work of the Savior that we serve. What a blessing that is. Do you realize, and the Bible tells us here in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 19, it says, but with the prayers, with, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. What's that speaking of? It's talking about our redemption, that we're not redeemed with things, corruptible things such as silver and gold, but we are redeemed with the uncorruptible thing, like the precious blood of the Lamb of God without blemish and without fault, without the spot. Thank God today, the sinless work of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Him being the sinless work and the finished work, stands upon the fact that He was a sinless sacrifice. Do you realize that they brought Him before Pilate, Pilate says, I find no fault in this man. Amen. Amen. As he stood there in judgment hall, Pilate had to say, I find no fault in this man. You know why he couldn't? Because there wasn't any fault in the Savior. There wasn't any fault in the sinless sacrifice that died upon the cross and he was headed to the cross then. Remember what the thief said on the cross? It says, this man hath done nothing amiss. They said, we're getting what we deserve. But the man in the middle, he did not do anything wrong. He did not do anything amiss. He was a sinless sacrifice, and he died for you and me to establish our foundation that we're built upon. Oh, thank God for that tonight. We know that. Not only we see that it stands on the sinless sacrifice of Christ. Then we see his strength is it is never exhausted. Aren't you glad of that? That the strength of our sacrifice, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work of our Savior, his strength is never exhausted. The Bible says that God so loved the world. That tells me that there is enough to go around. If every man, woman, boy, and girl on, on this earth, on this world, on this globe, I'm not talking about Spartanburg. I'm not talking about the United States of America. I'm not talking about China and Brazil. I'm talking about the whole world in combined. The Bible says that he loved the whole world. He knew that there was enough of the grace of God to go around to every man, woman, boy, and girl that they could experience this. Why? Because the sinless sacrifice was sufficient, and it could not be exhausted concerning redemption plan for all mankind. And the Bible tells us that God wants all to come to the knowledge of the truth. All to be saved and birthed and born into the family of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse number 13, For whosoever, aren't you glad that you're whosoever? You say, preacher, who can God say? Whosoever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's just that plain. Not a maybe, not a might, but shall be saved. You see, it cannot. Its strength is never exalted. And we thank the Lord for that. There's so many things today that we find in our society that are running out. One time we got to the point that all our oil was, uh, so, so, uh, so to speak, was running out. Well, when they got it up to $3 a gallon, they had a whole lot more than they thought they had. Amen? You see, they say it was in short supply. So therefore, they began to increase the price. Then we got, they got it up where they wanted to. I haven't heard any much about any more shortages anymore. Every now and then they'll say we're going to go up because of this skirmish going on over here and this skirmish going on over there. And now they tell me, and I understand that the United States is the number two oil producing nation in the world. Go figure. But I can tell you this, one day the oil might run out. But you know what? I believe with all my heart there's going to be enough going around as long as God's young is on this earth. Because he's going to take care of us. 
I believe with all my heart, and I'll tell you this, I believe with all my heart. The reason we're still blessed in America is because of the remnant of God's people. Amen? I, you know, I, you know it, the, the stage is set. His return could happen at any moment, any time. And he could come right now. And I don't, under, I don't know why he hadn't come. But I, I, believe, I believe before the foundation of the world, he had it set in his mind. He knows when he's coming. He knew when he was coming at the beginning of time. And nothing's going to change that. But I know we've seen a lot of things come to pass, a lot of things happening. that setting the stage to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I believe what's holding back the wrath of God upon this nation is none other than the remnant of God's people that still love God and serving Him and trying to live for Him. Our foundation's not going to let us down, folks. He's not going to let the ball, the barrel of oil go down until we're out of here. I believe that with all my heart. I just simply believe. Now, I'm not saying we won't face some hard times. We may face some difficult times. We may struggle. But I'll tell you right now, I believe God's going to let it last till he gets us out of here. Amen? Praise the Lord. I think that, and that's the kind of foundation that we have. Can I say tonight that the blood still has power? There's still power in the blood. There's still wonder-working power. A songwriter said the blood will never lose this power. I say amen right there. We may try to belittle it. Men may try to belittle it. They might try to take it out of our song books. They may try to take it out of our Bibles. They may try to quit. They may, some may quit preaching it. Some may quit teaching it. Some may quit saying anything about it. But let me just say the blood will never lose its power to save. The sinless sacrifice will never be exhausted concerning redemption plan for all mankind. Thank God for that. And the reason for that is we have that firm and that sure foundation. Can I say not only is there still power in the blood, but there's still a, flout, a fountain that's still flowing. There is a fountain filled with blood thrown from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty state. There's still a fountain, thank God. Hallelujah, and bless His holy name. Let me just say, not only is there still power, not only is there still a fountain, but I'm thankful there's still a remedy for all mankind that need to be saved. And it's through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the sinless sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what our foundation is established upon. And let me just say that that, 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 uh, that we, as we trust the Lord Jesus Christ, and we have the finished work of our Savior, let me just say that also it is sufficient for time and eternity. Sort of basically goes along with what I've just got through saying. I thank the Lord tonight that it's always going to be there. At the beginning of the first century, as we in the 21st century, and even beyond, they will be enough. There'll be enough of the sinless sacrifice to go around. Remember what we read in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 9, where it said that the foundation of God standeth sure. To me, that tells me that it will last through time and eternity. And what a blessing and what a, what a comfort that is. It tells us in I know this is referring to the Apostle Paul as he was encountering some things in his life as he served the Lord, but I think tonight we can use this verse as an application in our lives and also an application for those that are not saved where it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 9 where it says that my grace is sufficient. <clears throat> Excuse me. The grace of God always has been Sufficient. From the beginning, it was grace. Now I know the grace dispensation began at Calvary. And it's continuing in the days and the time <clears throat> that we're living in. Before the dispensation of grace, it was the dispensation of the law. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful I'm in the grace dispensation. But let me just say, those that were saved under the the Law dispensation. And those that were saved, when Adam and Eve were saved, it was still by the grace of God, amen. It's still by His grace that He slew that animal and, slew, and, and shed that animal's blood. 
in order that Adam and Eve could have a covering for the nakedness on their body. It's always been by the blood. It always will be by the blood. And nothing's ever going to change that. And thank God it's still by the grace of God. And the grace of God is sufficient for every need that needs to be met in a person's life. Whether you're lost or whether you're saved. And thank God for that grace that we need every day in our life as we live for Him. I believe there's saving grace. I believe there's living grace. And I believe when it comes our time to leave this life, I believe there's dying grace. Old songwriter, I believe, but Brother Tom Hayes wrote that song, New Grace. Grace we've never needed before. It's not new to God. It's always been there. But it's something that you and I will experience one day when we get to the place in our life that we feel like there's no way we can carry on. And we get to the end of this journey and the grace that will take over in our life. It's always been by grace. It always will be grace. Time's not going to run out on it. It'll always be there. There's not an expiration date on the grace of God. Amen. A lot of times we'll um, we'll say we're going to have a uh, bring food for the food pantry, and we try to emphasize for folk not to bring any food that has expired. But yet we'll get some, and we'll go through each can, and we'll see what the expiration date is on that can and if that expiration date has 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 uh, run out then we'll just discard it we'll throw it in the trash we won't put it in the pantry to serve people and you'd be surprised at some of those dates of those cans that you get 2008 2009 some might be just a day or two but some of them Woo, they gone. But there is no expiration date on the grace of God. There is nothing, there is no time limit, and it's not going. Now, there will be a time. The Bible says that God's spirit will not always strive with man. There will be a time that God might turn a person over to be a, to a reprobate mind. The Bible's plain about that. They'll turn them over to a reprobate mind, and they'll not have a chance, an opportunity to be saved. But let me just say, it's always there for those that are willing to accept it, for those that are willing to receive it, for those that want it. It will always be there. It will never, ever expire or ever run out. We see salvation. The, the grace of God begins through salvation, and it continues on through our life as we live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say tonight, and I mentioned this a little bit this morning, I think, but there's nothing that could ever rock our salvation. Nothing can ever destroy our foundation. Nothing can ever do away with our foundation. You say, preacher, can we get off that foundation? You may get out of fellowship with God, but if you're saved by the grace of God, and you've trusted Him as your Savior, and you've had a personal relationship with Him, you're on there to stay. Now we'll say this. There's some that's not as faithful and not as firm on that foundation they should and ought to be. We lose that fellowship. We, we lose that communion with the Lord. And, and, and we allow things to, to sort of, as I said this morning, somebody said, well, if, if the rock starts shaking, just lay down on it. Listen, that rock's not going to shake. We may shake. We may stumble. We may fall. We may give up. We may throw the towel in. We may quit. But the foundation is not going to waver. It's not going to shake. It's there to stay, and it's there forever. You see, there's no wind. There's no wave. There's no storm. There's no generations. And the reason I said no generations is because of this. In this generation that we're living in, the devil's doing everything he can to tear down our foundation. And we mentioned this just a week or so ago concerning our young people. If there's ever been a time we ought to be concerned about these kids just now. If we're not real careful, we're going to lose this generation. And they're not, they're not going to know what it is to have a firm foundation to be built upon. You know why? 
because the devil is watering it down. And some of the things that these people are getting in some of these so-called places that they call church is nothing more than watered-down religion. And I'm telling you right now, it will not hold up during a storm. It won't hold up when the waves start bashing and the winds start blowing. It will not hold up. And we need to let our kids know what really works. We need, we need to let our kids know there's still an old path and an old, old road. We still need to let our kids know that there's still old time uh, religion, old time salvation, and old time serving the God. Amen. I uh, me strike that word religion. Don't want no religion. We need salvation and a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the problem today. People's got religion, but you can be religiously wrong. And there's a lot of that today in our land. No generations, no government will ever wreck that foundation. No government. We think of America being uncomparable. We don't think nobody can beat us. Layman's term. We think we're on top of the rack. Wrong. wrong. If we're not real careful, China's going to own us. They, they really, really, they already do. You realize our, co- our country has to borrow money from other places to function, to, to, func- to operate this, uh, this country every day? The national debt. The national debt will never be paid. You won't see it paid. I won't see it paid. These kids sitting here won't see it paid. Their kids won't see it paid if the Lord doesn't come back. This is simply not going to happen. That's not going to rock our foundation. That's the reason today you better have that thing settled. You better know for sure. No government, no groups. No groups is going to rock my foundation. We was at the fair and right across from us in the fair was the booth that set the upstate atheist. You say, preacher, that bothered you? Oh, things bother me. Then people's dying and going to hell. It ain't going to rock me. Because I know where my faith is. I know where my trust is. I know what my foundation is. Well, I'd hold up, brother, have, have something built upon and build a foundation and what they're not trusting in. The very thing that they are denying and the very thing that they are not trusting in is the very thing that keeps you and I shouting and praising God and going forward for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. No religions. Catholic Church is a powerful church. And Brother Robert knows a lot about that. Let me just say the Catholic Church. And, and, and listen, let me just say this. The Catholic Church has put many, a many, a many of Baptist people to death. You say, preacher, I don't believe that. You read it in church history. They did it. They put them to death. The Catholic Church. But the Catholic Church can't shake my foundation. They might they might can take my life, but they can't take my foundation. <laughs> they can't take my salvation either, by the way. Glory to God. I like that song that old brother uh brother. Uh, Mike Boone sings. <laughs> Bless his heart. I love him. Boy, I love to hear that old boy say he's a blessing. I, I just thrilled my soul every time he comes by. But I like for him to sing that song they, that they can take the, the Ten Commandments off the courthouse walls and all this thing, but they can't take Jesus from me. I, I don't know exactly how the song goes. I just know I get a blessing out of it every time he sings it. But what we got today can't be taken away. Or well, something that we can build on. And that's what we need as individuals. That's what we need as family, something we can build on. That's what we need as a church, something that we can build on. And I'm telling you, folks, God is opening doors for us. Boy, he's opening doors for us, and we, got, we, ought, to, we ought to ask God to give us the wisdom to walk through those doors and do what's pleasing and honorable unto him. We've had... Opportunity upon opportunity afforded to us as a church to be a witness and to witness people of Christ. Let's don't miss it. Amen. Let's don't miss the mark. But let's build. Build upon the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ.
Let's stand with our head bowed and our eyes closed, please.